Welcome back to the Peerless Members Only Video Group. I am Katie North, and today we are going to be painting disco balls. I love disco balls. I think they're so fun. I always have one up in my house. I love how the light goes off of it. So this one, we are doing a rainbow, so it's gonna be filled with all of the colors. Um, I had a friend tag me in an Instagram post that someone had been painting them, but they were doing it with acrylic paint. So I thought it would be so cool to try to do it with Peerless. And I hope you enjoy it. It's really fun. I would say the number one tip that I would give is to make sure to leave enough light squares um, to make sure you have that sphere shape. So if you have any kind of those um, practice drawings where you do the light source and the dark parts and the light parts that make the, the sphere look like a sphere, <laughs> those would be helpful. And we're just trying to keep it... Um, all those spaces light enough to make that sphere shape and then doing all of the different colors. So you're gonna be playing with the light source and kind of getting the tones of each color light enough and dark enough to show where those light sources and shadows are, which gets a little bit tricky when you're doing those all in rainbow colors. So I think I figured it out. I definitely did three different trial runs to try to figure out how to do this for you guys. So. I love it and I might end up doing a series of them because I love them so much. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Okay, so you guys get the added bonus that I have done this painting now three times and I had decided that I liked the one the best with the individual mirrors. So I took the time to draw it out on Procreate and I have this sketch available to you. And how I started this painting is I used my light box and I transferred every single one of those little mirrors on my disco ball onto my watercolor paper. So as you see here, I am ready to start. And, and right now I am deciding where I want my lightest um, light source or lighter, lighter tones in color watercolors on my disco ball. So helps kind of just to tell where you want those light sources, especially if you're also doing like, um, I mean, I don't even know. I feel like it would be really good too for like a black and white disco ball, like more of a traditional one. But this one I'm trying to do the rainbow colored. So there's so many different kind of colors going on at the same time. Having those areas kind of already blocked out was a huge help. So I have made my paint palette and I have a uh, deep yellow flesh tint, royal crimson, light green, sky blue, and violet. And then I put two different strips of uh, packing tape. So that's going to be my palette that I'm using on there. A couple of the um, um, practice ones that I did before this, I thought it was actually kind of, I got too much of the same color and then it kind of just didn't have enough varying tones. And I really wanted each individual mirror to be a different color but still have the tones close enough that it showed the shape of the sphere and then also like the really bright highlights so having that paint palette so easy and convenient there that i was able to shift every every square a little bit just right off the bat was very very convenient so focusing on the lighter areas first i'm kind of making little patches and the lightest in the center and then around those areas where are going to be where we're going to start with the color so this area kind of to the left I decided it's going to be like the lightest blues to a darker blues to teals the little lightest area on the right is starting at yellows and then a little bit darker yellows and then some oranges and reds and things like that and then the purple over there is the lightest purples to darker purples and also has pink hues in there so that's how I've decided how I want to kind of merge all of these colors together while still keeping the highlighted areas going. So once you establish all of your lighter tones, we'll come back in a little bit and I'll do the mid-tones.
Right, so this next step, we are going to be doing our midtones, and we're going to begin to create some shape and shadow with our kind of tones when where they want to live. So right now we're focusing on the blue area, and we're trying to build out a highlight from that main super soft sky blue, and we're going to be doing all the squares around it to kind of uh, create that rounded shape. And of course, the the um, the way that the mirrors are placed are really going to help create that rounded shape, but more so the amount of shadows that you're putting in and the placement of each squares, it's going to kind of create that shimmer on that like rounded edge. So all the way around the lightest sky blue, you're going to be a little bit more intense and vibrant sky blue. And then as you move further out from that point, you're going to start adding in a little bit of violet. And, and the violet's just going to shift the blue a little bit to more of like a royal blue. And then by the time you're ready to do some shadows, which you'll see in a few in a few minutes, you're going to add more purple. And the purple is super intense. It's the violet from the um, Peerless Pack from the, let's see, I just want to... Is it the violet? Yeah, let me look. I believe it is the violet, Wisteria Violet. And if any, if you use this one before, you know it is very intense in color. And so when you're ready to put down some of those dark areas, like here, you don't need much of it. So mixing that with the blue, you can kind of create that first bend in the crystal ball. And those are gonna be some of your darkest little squares that you're adding. All right, so now we've worked around a little bit and we can see those kind of that rounding shape starting to happen and then some of that heaviness that you get with the darker tones. So we're gonna let those hang out for a little bit and now we're going to work in our orange and yellow section. So the same thing that we did with the blue, we wanna keep that middle section the, the lightest of the yellows so it stays a very nice and bright uh, highlighted area. And then you're going to work out from those points and kind of put all of the oranges and you know different tones of that. So what I did do is closer to the bottom, I made more of red tones. And then when I started going up to the top, I started doing more pink tones. Are you still with me? I hope I haven't lost you. I swear in the end, it turns out really cool and it's completely worth it. So the next step we are going to do is continue our cool section. So the way that we're kind of like making this imaginary kind of rounded shape is we're going to continue this, this cool section of the blues and the teals up to the center. And then what I did to kind of blend them a little bit more together is when they're going towards the blue, we're kind of mixing those purples in there. And then when they're kind of going towards the, um, uh, on the other side, they kind of like where it's 
yellow to blue, a yellow to purple, they kind of get some green tones. And then you want to do a couple like surprise, <laughs> surprise mirrors where like there's like a yellow mirror, like a bright yellow mirror in the middle of all of like the, you know, cool blue ones just to kind of show like a like a light refracted off of something else and made that individual mirror pop out and little little details like that I feel like it makes super it kind of pop and sparkle a little bit more even though it's a flat surface you can kind of get those like shimmers and f cool things coming off it so that cool area kind of swooping up and then when you're kind of thinking about the bottom half um, we're going to start to blend the cool area to the warm area so kind of thinking about blue to yellow in between that would be green so that's kind of I kind of got that idea to kind of do that rainbow effect over from the left to the right side. Alrighty, and so the next step we are going to do is I wanted a super bright pop of color all the way swooping on the bottom to make that blue highlighted section really pop out. And so on the bottom, instead of continuing the cool colors, we are going to do all of the warm colors. All right, so all of these last little squares kind of feel like it goes a little tedious and I'm trying to figure out the best tone, so like between light or dark and not necessarily um, worried about the actual um, color of each of them, but more so that it creates those highlighted areas that I want to. And sometimes in the different areas I lose a little bit just because the, the color is so pigmented. So I would recommend, I go back with the white highlights a little bit and kind of reestablish some of my highlighted areas. So, but at this point, I feel like a lot of my highlights looked better at this point and I might've gone a little bit too crazy with my paint. So err on the side of less is more for your, for your like designed 
and sectioned out highlighted areas. But other than that, it's getting pretty close to all of the squares being done. And then all of those little squares that I left out were a little bit more of the ones that I wanted to pop out with like a funky, funky color that wasn't necessarily expected next to it. Um, so once you fill in every single one of your squares, next we are going to start to do the background of the disco ball, so behind the mirrors. All right, so this might be an easier part or a little bit less stressful part just because we're not going to be shifting the colors anymore and we're not trying to think about our light sources as much, but we are trying to fill in all of the background behind every single mirror on this disco ball. And the way that I do this is that I want to make sure all of the left-hand side of the ball gets the mixture of the royal crimson with just a tad of the yellow and it makes this really pretty fuchsia color. And then everything on the right side of the disco ball gets, oh actually I think I did add a color, I forgot to, to mention that. I add the scarlet um, from the complete edition to my 
my pack because I wanted there to be like a brighter orangey red. You could also get it mixing the royal crimson with the flesh tint too. And then all of the right side of my disco ball gets that. And then there's a few little sections in the center that instead of doing the warmer tones behind, I do with um, a little bit mixed with the sky blue and the violet. And it's a very diluted, um, like soft, soft tone in the middle. But fill it up <laughs> all the way across. It's easier to remember just kind of pink on the left side, red behind on the right side, and then a little skinny up in the middle, you get a, like, a little bluish purple. But other than that, good luck to you because this takes forever. <laughs> did all of that kind of pinkish color on the left there and now down here I'm getting close I am going to be mixing up that lighter purple which is the blue and the violet and I'm going to be doing all of these sections with the purple
So now we are doing the top section on, and that is with the deep yellow with the royal crimson to kind of get that really vibranty kind of orangey fiery red and I think it looks so cool behind all of those blue tones especially I love the contrast of them and so we're getting pretty close so this is definitely <laughs> you've made it this far you are so close so once we are done with that we get to have a little bit more fun and play with some highlights All right, so now we are on to our highlights. We are going to either just highlight the areas that we want to be white, but then the other little tip that you can do is you can mix your white. The Peerless work works with this too. If, the, if it's light enough on the page, it kind of gets a little bit of opaque. You can mix the white with like the, the sky blue and you get kind of like a really soft opaque color and it's really pretty to add in and how to use those mixed with your lighter tones. And if you want there to be like a little bit more of um like a pastel kind of tone of like tone or color. Yeah, tone or color, yeah. <laughs> so as much as you wanna do, I do kind of outline some of the mirrors on the kind of bottom side. One of the reference photos I was looking at kind of has like really bright lines that like, it was kind of like the light was directly shined on the edges of the mirrors. So you can have really sharp lines for those, like right here where I'm seeing. And so I wanted to add some of those back in. And yeah, I mean, wherever you kind of want to see it. You can also try the little trick when you um, blur your eyes. And if it looks like a sphere and it's, it looks like the shape is there, even though there's a million different colors in there, the, that, that basic shape um, isn't quite there. But you can kind of like, okay, maybe this area needs a little bit more brighter in the light source. Just kind of put those... Um, light sources back in with your white highlight.
And with the last bit of finishing touches, I give you the completed disco ball. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. I had so much fun doing these. I do think I might do a whole series on them. So I will keep you all posted, but I would love to see your paintings if you try this. And make sure to tag Peerless Watercolors on Instagram and Facebook, and if you have it in the private members group as well. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time.